welcome to the Boston Roll channel. If you want to support my daily Eternal Magic offerings while getting amazing perks like the Boston Roll Discord community, have me play your deck on the channel, or list inside where guides before tournaments, check out the Patreon or YouTube membership program. This channel is possible because of these amazing sponsors. Check them out, all their links are in the video description. As always, thanks for being here. Let's go play some Magic. Welcome back to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Legacy at the request of Patreon subscriber Vlandrick. And this is Yorion Crashcade. I'm going to start this video by acknowledging that Modern Horizons 3 is not out yet at the time of this recording. I know it's going to release in the window where people are going to want to see those cards. Sorry, they're not here yet. Might be confusing because I had early access to the set, which means you have seen Modern Horizons 3 on the channel already, and this is going to come after that. But this is the nature of pre recorded content. Please bear with me. I know we're all excited for the new cards. I promise they're not available. That's why they're not in the deck right now. All of that out of the way. This deck is uh, Cascade Rhinos. Crashing Footfalls. Spend three mana, get two four fours. Pretty good deal. It's also a Yorion deck. This is the deck that had just broken when Yorion got banned in Modern. By having 12 Cascade enablers in the deck, you actually have a higher density of hitting Cascade on turn 3 than in a 60-card deck with 8 copies. But you have the same 4 Crashing Footfalls, which means you're less likely to draw them. The math just works great in both directions. And if you can shove two 4-4s four on turn 3 reliably, then you can focus on what your good spells in the deck are. And we've got Oro, Solitude, Force of Will, Endurance, Brazen Bar, Teferi. These are great spells. Leyline Binding makes us all really easy, ties the room together. Five color mana base anyway. Can't do anything on turn one or two anyway. Just a well constructed deck. And Landrick sent this in to celebrate playing their first paper tournament since 2019. They did pretty well in it and just wanted to send this deck through the channel one more time. Let's celebrate with Landrick and go play this deck. This is Yorion Crashcade. I'm on the play in round one versus Neville Shoot, who is a known Doomsday expert. My hand is not very good against Doomsday. Is any hand in this deck good against Doomsday, though? I'm going to mulligan this. The fact it already has a Rhino, and I know the matchup's likely to be fast. Okay, here we go. I will keep this and put Fire Ice to the bottom. This has the can of Rhinos if I want it. It has Force Blue card. Sticking it to Fairy against Doomsday is actually pretty dope if you have any kind of follow-up, because it cuts off a lot of the tricks they can do post-Doomsday pile. But Teferi is my pitch to Force if I need to Force something. There's the Ponder. Do we have Surveillance in this deck? I didn't even check. We don't, and we probably should. Yeah, I think putting, like, two Surveillance... I forgot to check that before I hit Submit. Having, like, two of those in the in the pile is worth a lot. A Rockrin and Indoth Trium. What do we got here? Jeskai and Abzan. I do need blue. I'm going to get Abzan Trium here. Or, Jeskai Trium. Tropical Island is in the mix. That turns on Beseju. So now I have two pieces of interaction, kind of. Beseju only really works if they make a pile that's thin on mana and doesn't have a replacement land in it. Which could happen. Like, that's not nothing. Fetched with Polluted Delta. Dark Ritual. Looks like it's go time. I will force this pitching my Teferi. I expect they will have some ability to fight back. But still gotta try. It forced me back, pitching Athos's Oracle. One down, one to go. I doubt this Besage is going to be useful. Just putting that out there. Doomsday has resolved. Let's get a look at this list. Okay, I see some Bowmasters. One copy, two, two Bowmasters. Stifle is in this list. Okay, I don't see any one rings or any crazy side juke stuff like that. I am going to besage you this Underground Sea just in case that's useful. Like, I'm in the literally do anything that might be slightly useful phase of the game. Because I'm definitely going to lose if I don't do stuff. Cycling Street Wraith in response to that. Considering in response. All right, so they're loading up, working their way through the pile here. Into Force of Will. Cycled Edge of Autumn. Okay, so they're going to have Thassa's Oracle, Cavern of Souls. In hand. I have another Besage in my deck. Can I draw it right now? Nope. Alright. We have certainly lost, but I'm not even going to cast Ardent Plea because it doesn't matter. 
if they don't win this turn, they're going to deck out. And I don't want to necessarily reveal that that's what my deck is doing. Okay, yep. There it is. Finger on the button. Please cast the Merfolk. And we're out of here. Okay. Cards that are good against this deck. Endurance, for sure. Inevitable Betrayal is really funny. If I steal all their oracles. Uh, interesting. Is betraying their oracles actually better than putting rhinos into play? Probably not, but it's fun to think about. Are there any cards that definitely stink in this matchup? I'm not super hyped on Leyline Binding. Fire Ice could be a time walk. Just tap a land, I draw a card on the turn. They want to do something. Uro is crazy slow. But he's also green and blue for Force and Endurance, which I have 12 total copies of. All right, Uro's got to stay in. Solitude versus Leyline Binding. Now we're talking about removal spells for their potential jukes. I need three spots for sure, maybe a fourth. Yeah, I think I'm going to kick Solitude out of here. I'd rather answer the thing for one mana if it's going to get answered than two cards. Okay, let's go. This hand is bad. I'm going to mulligan. This hand is also bad. What am I looking for? Like, I know my opponent's a capable Doomsday pilot. What am I looking for as the Yorian deck? Probably at least an Endurance or a Force. I'm going to go to five. Okay. I'll keep this one. Get rid of the Fairy and Basic Mountain. All right, that's not pretty, but it works. Bonus on seven. We're dead. Yeah, this isn't a matchup I would select on purpose. If I were, if I had to choose who my opponents were, I would not pick Doomsday for this deck. Underground Sea Ponder. I don't know if you all saw it, but this... Uh, Doomsday line from somebody on in Japan on Twitter went viral a couple weeks ago. They were at one versus a bowmaster with five cards in their deck, and the pile was like, consider binning Asa's Oracle. That draws Quicken. Quicken in response to the bowmaster trigger that's lethal. The Quicken draws Unearth and creates a second bowmaster trigger, and then the Unearth which you can now cast at instant speed, puts the Oracle into play in response to two lethal Bowmaster triggers. Sick line. Doomsday players are on some other shit. Okay, I found land number three, which means I'm happier to get lands now. I'm going to get all the Triumphs. They juked me with Opposition Agent. They got me. Okay, predicting yourself. You got it. You're welcome to reload. I'm predicting away a Street Wraith is so sick. It's like doubling the Wraith's ability without losing any life. Basically cheating. Okay, I got a couple options here. I could shove Teferi and put the shields up. I could put Yorian in my hand and have Force Blue card, Force Blue card. I think I want to play Teferi because that'll test their answers twice. And if they fail the first test, then their answers don't work anymore because that's how Teferi rolls. Okay, I've got white, blue. I want more green. Yeah, I need a second green in case I draw a Endurance. White, blue, colorless. They are a deck with Daze and Force of Will in it. I don't really expect this to resolve, but I'd be stoked if it does. Force Pitching, Thassa's Oracle. Okay. That means they don't have Daze. That's good news. Thoughtseize. Oh, no. And I still have Force Blue card, but they can strip my only threat here and just leave me with Double Force. Okay, I took a Force. Wasteland. That's fun. Taking out my Indotha Triome. Okay, land is my best draw. Ooh, it's a fairy. Not great, but my next land is pretty good. The old Wasteland Doomsday deck. You hate to see it. Brainstorm. Oh no, another one. Were these there in game one? Or is this a sideboard plan? Oh yeah, well hidden. I don't see any Wastelands here. Okay. Okay. Cool stuff. Just sideboarding into... Scam. Ooh, a win con. Tick tock. Got a crashing footfall suspended now. Should have took me off green while you still could. As I should talk confidently versus their five card hand while I have one land. Ooh, two lands. We have seen Stifle though. Do you have it? You do have it. That's fine. Because Stifle also would have stopped crashing footfalls from resolving. And that would have got a fetch land as well. Ooh, just pass back to me. We're in Rhino Town. Okie dokie. Six cards in your hand. They know I have Force Blue card. They don't know about Teferi and Chartless Agent. 
Do not shuffle the ponder. Oh, wait, there are two wastelands here. My brain just didn't even register it. I was trying to look at a doomsday pile, uh, like the exile pile on camera is so hard. I always miss the guards. There are exactly two wastelands here. They're right in the middle. Okay. Never mind. Should have played around it. I couldn't have played around it. Fake news. Ottawara? Okay. That buttons me up versus Spell Pierce and Flusterstorm. When the rhinos crash in next turn. Rainstorm. They've done a lot of selecting. My deck's not as good as that because I can't play these cards. They've got a fetch. Another ponder. Still looking. Dark Ritual. Dude, this casts a Shouldred. All right. I'm going to pitch the Ardent Plea because I'm closer to casting Shardless Agent and I find Teferi more useful. Okay, that worked. Petal. You're just going to send it again? Hell yeah. Let's go. Okay, so I need to draw Endurance. That's the best card for me. I can pitch cast it off the Shardless Agent. They went extremely low on this Doomsday. They're selecting Predict out of their graveyard, which I do get to see. And Endurance is my best draw. If I draw a white land, I can play Teferi and redraw and hope for a force. I don't think Pesachu is going to help me here. Fire Ice not going to help me here. I guess I could ice one of their lands into a force. So Ice is a redraw. Ice is as good as Teferi is here. Hilariously. And they are dead on board of the Rhinos. Once Doomsday resolves, they'll be at 7. So they do have to win this turn. But I imagine they can figure it out. Alright, Rhino time. Come on, deck, good card. Ooh, alright. Well, I'll cast this Teferi. I'll get Savannah. The Teferi can draw Endurance or Force here. And we're in good shape. No, your last card was Daze, you sick maniac. Alright, fine, fine, fine. No, the Double Wasteland was sick. Great tech. I did not register it when reviewing their pile. Not that I could have played around it. I'm not going to fetch Basics versus Doomsday. But it worked out extremely well. Cool stuff. Targeting themselves with Predict. Nailed a Street Wraith. They just have to land Oracle to win here. At an Edge of Autumn for the road. And there it is. A surprisingly cool game too, considering I'm Mold to 5 in an abysmal matchup. But on to the next round. That was pretty good, actually. This video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, the easiest way to build magic decks online. Moxfield supports over 30 formats, including Legacy and everything else you'll see on this channel. There's multiple customizations so you can interact with your deck how you want. Views such as text, grid, or stacks, and groupings like type, subtype, color, color identity, even artist. The site offers light mode, dark mode, and so much more. However you want to see your deck, Moxfield can provide it for you. Follow my Moxfield to keep up with the channel and what I'm playing in paper. I'll see you there. I'm on the play in round two. I'm not excited to be holding a Footfalls, but I can just suspend it and play a pitch game. I have Force Blue card or Endurance Green card. If I can get Yorion, that's a white card and a blue card. My third land starts casting more spells. This is good stuff. Oh wait, I was on the draw. <laughs> Whoops. Doesn't change my assessment, but does change. Who gets to go first? Oh, they mold to five and have a polluted delta of underground sea. You hate to see it. Though I have the endurance this time, if this is more doomsday or even rescaminator, endurance is good there. Ooh, okay. I'm not doing anything on turn two, which means I can fetch here. Okay, so this gives me green white. This gives me blue. I need double green eventually. I want green on turn one for footfalls. I think this is a savannah situation. Or tropical islands just as good, right? They both get me to the same place. Yeah, I'll take tropical island. Suspend my crash nosferuses. Another ponder. They did mold a five, so whatever's going on over there, it is softened by that. Bayou. Oh, we got a bug deck. Duress. Oh no. Well, this can only hit one card. You got it. The rest is usually not in fair decks, so I suspect this is Storm at this point. Bug colors, the rest in the main. Let's hope Endurance lines up against their their draw here. If they just like ritual out and ad nauseum, we're dead. But if they have to go through the graveyard in any kind of way, that's good. Volcanic Island. Yeah, four color mana base, the rest in the main. Smells like Storm. Do I want to apply pressure here? Or leave up Endurance, because I can't do both. And Endurance is pressure, if I cast it. Okay, I'll leave up Endurance. 
I think the fastest path to death is just tap out for some shit that doesn't matter and lose. Hot seas, all right. I will endurance in response because I'm running out of game to play. Hit their graveyard, and now if they do some beseech the mirror stuff, it's gonna work. Took the shardless agent. I get rhinos next turn. It would be a great turn to draw a force. Ooh, the bonus endurance. If hopefully they think the coast is clear and go for a graveyard line now that I've flushed out the endurance, but I drew the other one. There's only two in the main, by the way. All right, Wishclaw Talisman. Confirmed Storm. Rockrun Triome. A Leyline Binding would be a good draw here. I'm not going to flash out the other endurance. That's my only interaction. Doesn't change the clock. Another Footfalls. Life is Pain. Attack for three. And I'll just pass from here. I have exactly 11 damage on board. They have to go for it. Hopefully their line involves the graveyard. Petal, Petal. Ritual. Infernal Tutor from Hellbent. Yep, can't stop that. Hopefully this gets a Beseech the Mirror, but I don't think they need to go through the graveyard anymore. Well, okay. Beseech the Mirror resolves. Let's go! Another one. All right. Sometimes you just draw the, the one-outer. They'd force a will or force a negation also would have locked that game up. Teferi would have beat that line. But sweet. We take them. We take them. No complaints allowed. Teferi turns off Beseech the Mirror, which is why I'm interested in it. Not because I really think they're going to have interaction. Brotherhood's End. There's four of these. They do play a lot of artifacts in their deck. I think Solitude probably just completely sucks. Brazen Borrower is something I could flash in to attack with. It's also blue for my stuff that cares about that. Force of Vigor, Brotherhood's End. How much artifact hate do I actually want in right now? Cyborg's packing a lot of it. Leyline Binding, Updex, Song of Creation, and Wishclaw Talisman. Okay, I'm going to stop here. This is the plan I am submitting. I have turned to Leyline Binding, but nothing really going on. I'm going to mulligan this. Ugh. I don't want to go to 5. I will keep this in with Endurance. Any green card gives me that interaction. I have turn 2 Binding anyway. We'll just see if it works out. They milled an Infernal Tutor. Okay, now I have a green card to go with that. That panned out quickly. I'm going to fetch Indatha Triome in the end step. Because Indatha plus Rockrin is Domain. They both cast Leyline Binding. The Indatha can... Suspend a Rhino if I need to do that next turn. Here comes Indatha Triome. That also represents Veil of Summer, a card that they have to... Nope, they don't have to respect on a Cascade deck. Never mind. I do have double Endurance now, though, so even Thoughtseize can't take me off that. If they go for a line that doesn't use the Graveyard, I'm just dead. Okay. We're getting a pass. No land drop. That means there's seven spells in that hand. I think I just want to send in the Idiots. Tropical Island Shardless Agent, here they come. I'm going to put 10 power on the board. Try to pressure them into a fast line. That's not going to work. Okay, Fluster Storm. I'll put 2 power on the board. Interactive Storm decks are cheating. It's cool, though. I'm on board. Still have Endurance in my hand. Ponder. Did not shuffle, did not play a card. Still 7 spells over there. The Re-Rhinos. Okay, I could suspend these Rhinos if I think this game's going to last 6 more turns. Or I could keep it as a green card to pitch to Endurance. Yikes. I think I'd rather have access to two Endurances than these Rhinos here. They found a land, which goes well with that Brainstorm. They've selected so many cards. I don't think I should be just flashing out Endurances as threats. I got a lot of fetch lands now. Some might say too many. Some would include me. The Rhinos would be a three right now if I had suspended them. Wishclaw Talisman, that's exploitable by Leyline, if they don't use it right away. LED, okay. Lotus Petal, things are happening. Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual. Looks like it's simply go time here. Um, I'm going to Leyline Binding the Wishclaw Talisman in response to this Infernal Tutor, because if they wish for something, then they'll have a card in their hand. They could just wish for a Dark Ritual and build Storm here, but at least this is out of the way. And if they wish for it, the ability fizzles because it's not a permanent my opponent controls anymore. And then I have Wishclaw on my turn. If I get a turn. Which, they have a Lethal Storm line without it. Oh yeah, they just gnaws over top. Yeah, that's pretty freaking good. 
Okay, Veil of Summer. Yeah, they had enough mana to Nas over top. Powerful stuff. Okay, yeah, now they just have Tendrils in their hand. I think they'll figure it out from here. They are at three, though. If I'd flashed in Endurance a turn earlier. All right, you got me. We don't need to do this. Okay, um, I think my plan is still my plan here. Just be aware of Flusterstorm. Okay, Force Blue card, and a Clock, keep. And it's the Violent Outburst, which means I don't even have to tap out on my turn. Busted. Banned and Modern, you know. Put on Multi 5 again. Underground C. Thought C's, go ahead, have a look. Took my threat rather than my interaction, which means they have a slow sculpty hand. Gonna get the Jeskai Triome. No spell, okay. Five spells in their hand, terrifying. Get the Abzan Triome. Come on, any blue card. Sweet. All right, blue, white. Here's to fairy. Can't fluster this. I'm going to draw a card. Okay, cool. Now Durest and Thoughtseize don't even take me off force blue card. And they can't fluster or veil. They'd have to veil first, which is going to cost them a mana in a situation where they're hurting for it. Thoughtseize resolves. Behold. Taking one of my two copies of a thing. Feels good. I'd love to apply pressure now. Fire Ice. That's not bad here. Plus to Fairy, and then I'm going to Ice their land in the upkeep. I should fetch first and get Tropical Island. Ice your land. There'll be no Ponders or Thought Seizes this turn. Thank you. Ottawa are probably not useful for the matchup, but I'll take any land drop I can get. Speaking of, they found one. Come on, Rhinos. Uro. Okay, interesting. That is a threat. Slow and steady. Uh, hold on. I need to tap better. Green, blue. Okay, this leaves up Force of Negation. And the other first way I was tapping did not. I do have a threat, though. Ooh, now I could just jam in. I think jamming in is better here than holding up Hardcast Force. Because if they have a Duress, they can beat this, whether it's Hardcast or not. Yeah, I'm just going to pile on the goods and make them have it. Right, Uro unlocks the Can of Rhinos. I have Force Blue card. They know my hand, so if they can win here, they know they can win. They have to do it without instant speed interaction. If Fluster Storm's just dead here, Beseech the Mirror doesn't work. They have to Veil or Duress me and then find a Nas line. And they can do it. They have five spells in their hand. But I'm hoping for the best. Yep, there's the Veil. Uh, I will not be spending any resources on that. <laughs> Yeah, they just scooped. They're like, okay, I don't actually have it. Just see it if I could him to rock you. Sweet. On to the next round. Combo revenge. Welcome to topdeck.gg, your community's home for everything competitive magic has to offer. If you're hosting an event, playing for a huge prize, or advertising your events to thousands of players, we've got you covered. Using intuitive pairing software, playing magic is a breeze. Players just have to sign up online, then scan the QR code in store. Give competitors the gift of perfect information as their bracket updates in real time. The self-reporting software saves you time and leaves paper match slips in the past. Leave the heavy lifting to topdeck.gg so your community can relax and focus on playing Magic. I'm on the draw in round three. Remember in the deck tech how I said at 80 cards, we're more likely to have Cascaders and less likely to have Rhinos? Uh, I am going to keep this hand, though. I have Force Blue card and Threats to deploy. This is awkward and stupid but i'm in taiga who has taiga in their deck i'm fascinated already okay i think i fetch tropical island here that just starts getting my stuff together suspend this first can of rhinos and normally ignoble hierarch is in cradle control but that deck doesn't usually have taiga it certainly wouldn't fetch off arid mesa is this food chain goblins is that what we're doing not a common deck, but does meet the criteria of the cards we've seen. Goblin Engineer. Okay, we're some sort of artifact goblin hybrid thing. I pitched this to Fairy because Brazen Borrower interacts more cleanly. Goblin Welder. All right. Opponents on some stuff over there, and I like it. I do not believe that the second can of Rhinos is going to be worth more than holding a Brazen Borrower, just in case. In for two. Come get me. Get a taste. Lava Spur Boots, okay. I wonder if this is an Agatha Soul Cauldron deck. Has kind of the, the necessary bones for that. Fire Ice would be insane right now. 
Too much to ask for, though. Instead, my second can of Rhinos. Ooh, Orcish Bowmaster. My deck doesn't draw cards. That's mostly fine. Hashtag four force. That's what my deck is about. A Y R might. Okay. This is a lot of shitters that don't do anything. Booting up the Haywire Might, you got it. And attacking. I could bounce the Orc Army, which does permanently remove a threat from play. That leaves me open to the Welder. I think bouncing the army is fine. I would hate to lose this race. Petty Theft Orc Army. It's the same one damage this turn, but it's one less damage every subsequent turn that the game lasts. Come on, Fire Ice. Or... Blooded Strand. Basically the same thing, right? Yorian in the grip. Okay, I mean, all I can really do is put 12 power in play next turn and hope that the two guards in their hand don't kill me. 1, 2, 3, 4 damage. I go to 5, I fetch, I go to 4, then I put 3 giant bodies into play. Walking Ballista for 1. That's more damage. Yep, okay. They might just dingus wiggle past my defenses here. Did you hate when your opponent wiggles their dingus at you? On the sporting conduct. All right, Rhinos, get in here. Draw for turn. Something good. Violent Outburst. That saves me a life and puts some surprise rhinos into play, which are the most dangerous kind of rhinos. All wildlife experts agree. What I'm most worried about is a goblin engineer. Oh no, they're spending mana. Ensnaring Bridge. This is a card that you have? Gross. Okay. I hope they still make a chump attack into my rhinos. But they shouldn't. My god. All right. Well, that changes things. I'm still going to outburst violently. I have Besejus and Brazen Borrowers in my deck that, and Ottawara that can deal with that. I'm afraid to crack this fetch because that Walking Blista can start ratcheting up. And 3 damage isn't that much to have to deal. But I keep drawing these. Alright, fine. I'll cast Yorion, then I'm done cracking fetches. Tundra. I will not be flickering my Rhinos. They won't come back. Ah, oh, that is Snaring Bridge. What a pivot. Tough crowd. They don't have four mana yet, but once they do, I'm on a return clock to the Ballista. Oh no, the worst card they could ever have. That with Welder, they could just get literally whatever here. Soul Cauldron, yep, here we go. It's time. Time to die. I need an answer to Ensnaring Bridge right now. The third can of Rhinos arrives. Oh, I have Teferi also. Teferi also clears that. I have quite a few outs here. That's not one of them. Okay, do I lose this turn? They can weld Haywire Might into Soul Cauldron, exile Haywire Might. Our right, Lava Spur Boots makes sense also. Goblin Engineer, plus one counter. Yeah, Ballista puts me to two. Yeah, I'm just dead here. Because they give two creatures the abilities of Ballista. All right, you did it. Snaring Bridge right on time. Cool stuff. All right, Brotherhood's End, Force of Vigor. The Giant Squad is ready. They did do some amount of graveyard stuff, but does that graveyard stuff matter if I'm obliterating their board? I think Force of Negation can come out here. Brazen Borrower is tempting. Teferi and Endurance also tempting. With all these in his maybes. I could just cut all my Force of Wills and play to the board. I probably don't need Teferi number four. Do I need Teferi number three? Actively chopping to fairies now. Where moments ago I was considering bringing some in. Leyline Binding. That was also an out I didn't call. Yeah, I had a lot of outs to that ensnaring bridge for that one or two turns where it was there. Is this too many Force of Vigors? Is it possible to have too many Force of Vigors versus the Goblin Welder deck? Yeah, I'm actually going to cut another to fairy here and do it like this. Let's go. I like this hand. It needs a third land, but. In lands, I trust. I certainly drew one every single turn of last game. This deck had a lot of colors in it. I don't know if they can afford to Blood Moon, but it would be bad for me if they do. There's this jerk. Footfalls, right on time. Do I play a Taiga? I do. Very smart. Suspend Footfalls, right on time. Okay, land number three will be the big test here. I can beat a Blood Moon, so it's not a big deal. I have Force of Vigor. I would honestly be surprised if they play that card, but I am ready for it. I don't want to fetch here because I want maximum land still in my deck. 
Land, please. I hate my life. Okay. I will pass the turn and wait to die. Imagine just putting two four fours on the board right now instead of not doing anything. The Fable is going to be allowed to do its thing. Discarded Opal and Arid Mesa. Engineer. I'm ready with Endurance. I wish I had a third land, but the Endurance is here. Rexian Devourer. Okay, so I'm dead. Now I have Endurance. I would be dead. Okay, so I need to... If I force a Vigor now, this works. Alright, that's what I'm going to do. Kill the Soul Cauldron and the Fable. Pitching Uro to do it. Uro is the least exciting of the green cards in my hand. And now the Devourer's out of the deck. They can't combo blast me anymore. Deck, please, if you ever loved me, just give me an untapped land here. It doesn't even matter which one. I'd like to end their brotherhood. Come on, deck. Land, 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 land. Yes! All right. We're playing the game after all. I'm going to get Volcanic Island and Savannah, I think. Yeah, that does the most. Brotherhood's end for creatures. Three damage to each creature and Planeswalker. That's, that's all your shit. Okay. We managed to stabilize. They shot their combo. I beat it. Welder does represent Soul Cauldron again in the future. I have to decide how quickly I'm worried about that. I'm just going to send a can of Rhinos in. Because Brotherhood's End attack for 8 is so much better than Brotherhood's End pass. And drawing the backup Shardless Agent means I can Endurance if the Goblin Welder appears like it's going to do something messed up. Bowmaster, don't care. That card is very small. Grist the Hunger Tide. Cool. All right. All right they're just going to sack Orc Army to kill one of my Rhinos. That's the position they're in. I really like this. Because that was not good, and Grist still dies to Trample. And I have two more Rhinos showing up next turn. You call that a desperate play. After Grist dies, they can weld Soul Cauldron in, but I have Endurance. Okay, I'm going to attack their face and their Grist. Okay, no blocks, no effects. Cool. In that case, I'll just pass with Endurance available. Now the question is, do I want to wipe out the Soul Cauldron and leave them with the treasure, or do I want to leave them with the Soul Cauldron and no cards in their graveyard? I think I'd rather clear the Soul Cauldron. That's the actual combo out here. Endurance, slurp it up. And Goblin Welder is an exchange. Goblin Engineer is a sacrifice and return, so they do get to keep the treasure because the other thing isn't there to exchange with. If that was Goblin Engineer, they would have lost their treasure. Just fun templating from across Magic's history. Badlands, they got two cards left in their deck. Or in their hand, in their deck, lol. Alright, uh, Walking Ballista, that card's not good here. And I'm just going to serve with the whole team. Make them figure out combat. And then make two more Rhinos. Smoosh. The Walking Ballista can save five damage by itself here. By blocking Endurance and killing Shardless Agent. That's fine. And... Another can of Rhinos. Keep them coming. Brotherhood's End still in my hand in case they find Ensnaring Bridge. Surgically, my footfalls. Okay. Well, they're going to get to see my whole deck now. But they are Hellbent and dead on board. Good to know they have access to that card. They're going to see my 4x Brotherhood's End, including the one in my hand. 61 cards entered the revealed card zone. Take a screenshot. It'll last longer. Okay, go. If they draw a well, an Engineer... They can weld Great Furnace into whatever they tutor. Okay, but a lot of bad draws there. Endurance better than I originally anticipated. I think I said game one, they're probably a Soul Cauldron deck, but now seeing it, for real, much more interested. I haven't seen an Urza Saga yet. It would be weird if it wasn't in the deck, but it still looks like Teferi is among the worst cards here. Do I want a fun of Inevitable Betrayal, just in case they surgical my footfalls again? I don't think so. That sounds so bad. I got plenty of ways to win with the Endurances and the Borrowers and the Uros. Okay, let's go. Fire, Ice, and Besaidu are both really good against this deck. This is a little slow, but it is interactive and I like it. Taiga, Hierarch. Let's line them up for this Fire Ice to knock them down. And there we go. Immediately follow up with a threat. There is no Bayou in the deck, which is what pops off of Rock and Triumph for Domain. 
Wowsper boots. Oh no. Thorn of Amethyst. You jerk. All right, that's fine. I have Besage on my hand. And I can't fetch Volcanic Island, which pops off of Indotha Triome. I'll just get Rockrin. And I can fetch Indotha here, or I can fetch just some green land that uses Besaju. We'll see what happens, because that Thorn does slow down some of their stuff, too. Urza Saga. Confirmed. Not that I had any doubt it was in the deck, but now we finally see one. Broadside Boombie Dooms. All right. Powerful. Wish I could fire ice that. Okay, you're in there. Okay, how do I want to handle this? I have one Besaju to use. I think Urza Saga is what I'm most worried about with the Besaju. I can work my way through Thorn of Amethyst. If they want to throw literally anything at me here, any one of their permanents, I'm happy to trade it a few life points for at this point. It's a little awkward that if I Besaju the Thorn, they could throw it for damage. They lose the land, but they get damage for free. I guess if I was going to Besaju Thorn, I should have done it before combat. Just a little thing that I've never had come up before. Ooh, whipping their boots at me. These boots are made for throwing. Okay, how can I get to Domain? I basically can't. I needed to fetch Indotha first if I wanted this to line up right. Okay, I won't be getting to Domain. That's fine. Tropical Island, Besaju the Saga. That's the card I'm least prepared to fight through. Raucous Theater, getting that sick value off me. Thorn is really good versus Cascade decks because you have to pay the tax twice. Okay. Savannah comes in. I can fire the Bombardier. And then Leyline Binding is good for next turn. And then the turn after that, I can outburst some Rhinos in. Another one of these jerks. Start of combat. Yeah, I guess I have to do it here. Because if I wait... Like, if I do this now, they get an extra point off Exalted. But if I wait, they could throw this thing for 5 damage, and that's so much worse. All right, I'll just take the extra one. And they are deleting the Ignoble Hierarch, pushing that damage. They know what their job is here, and it's to get me dead. The Leyland Binding costs 3, which means I don't need to fetch. Going to 4 might matter, but I'll have to fetch next turn anyway. But if I draw a land that's untapped, I won't have to fetch. All right. I will pass and hope they're almost out of stuff to do. If they just have a third broadside, I'm in a lot of trouble. Beginning of combat, Leyline Binding. Get this out of here. Please pass with no plays. Please, please pass with no plays. Another four? No! This was my Rhino turn. Uro is not a non-creature spell. Okay, I can never cascade into anything with double thorn in play. I could remove one of the thorns, get one can of Rhinos in in the next turn cycle. Or I could Uro and just pivot onto that. I think I'm going to Uro. The Surgical Extraction also costs 2 mana plus 2 life at this point. Oh, that's fun. Do I have a fetchable green source left? Yeah, Taiga, let's go. Taiga. Alright, bank this. There's Rhinos ticking down now. They'll cost 2 the turn I can cast them in the current board state. Uro is castable. I have exactly 5 in the graveyard. They slam that fetch land pretty quick. If it's Soul Cauldron, they can exile Uro. Engineer, okay. Where are we going with this? Got a Soul Cauldron. That's going to be a turn behind, but it's still going to be a good card. And their creatures will gain the abilities of Broadside Bombardier. Endurance. That's a creature. Green, green, blue, blue. Shove this Uro in for Exaxes. If they activate Engineer, I'm endurancing their face off. We're starting to turn it around here. 10 life, not worried about a single Bombardier shot. Okay. Something's happening in the end step. Orcish Bowmaster. Didn't want the extra one damage on my Uro draw. That's fair. Maybe they just drew a card and passed the turn. I'll fetch for my other Triome in the end step. Let's get that domain popping. Footfall sticks down. Now I can hard cast Endurance. Don't even have to pitch to it. That's so sick. Okay. Uro, I think it's worth attacking. Drew another Footfalls. And I will simply pass the turn and see how much cat and mouse they want to play around this Engineer. Nope, they've had enough. Cast Endurance with my mana. Green, green, leave up blue, blue. Yeah, okay. Endurance. The stones. Wipe out all this stuff. Take it away. 3-4 body. Have I mentioned on this channel ever that I love Endurance? Is that known? Because I do. 
Now Brazen Borrower, Petty Theft is online. Casting Brazen Borrower to beat down doesn't make any sense. Pyroblast, ouch. Okay, that's fine. Casting Brazen Borrower to beat down doesn't make any sense because uh, Uro trigger would just kill it. But they just removed Uro. So maybe it's fine. Do I want a Petty Theft Thorn of Amethyst or Goblin Engineer? I'm going to clear the Thorn. Because I can double outburst as soon as I untap. I have exactly two footfalls left. I could respond two footfalls with outburst, which means surgical never has a chance to hit me. Another Uro. Yeah, I'm just going to attack. Worried about very little here. Mox Opal, which is not on. Thorn of Amethyst. Red, green, red, green. Okay. It's making sure I can do this twice. Outburst. And they're done. They don't even want to see the other one. That was another fun match. On to the next one. The Bosch and Roll channel is proudly partnered with the Resleevables. Hmm. Good. All right, here we go, gang. In this YouTube series, hosts Cedric Phillips and Patrick Sullivan take us on a set-by-set -set journey through the good, the bad, and the ugly of Magic's history. Each episode is a focused deep dive into the facts about a set's design and release. The magic lore expressed through the cards in that set. Tournament edition gameplay videos featuring products and Pro Tour decks of the era an award show that shouts out the best and weirdest cards of the set, and a final grade for the set's overall success. Whether you want a history lesson or a nostalgia hit, The Resleevables has it at youtube.com slash the Resleevables. On the draw in round four, that's four draws, if you're keeping track at home. Complaint equity through the roof. My hand's great. Uh, I have a piece of pitch interaction. I have a curve into normal interaction. And I have a can of rhinos. The hand is soft to wasteland, but many hands in this deck are. Burton Catacombs. Underground Sea, perfect. Just what we want to see. Get it? Just what we want to see? Haha. <laughs> All right, what do you got? An Entomb? What's the play? Troll of Cosidum. All right, that's way less scary than Entomb. Cycled that for a Bayou. So we've got another Sultai scam. I don't know why I said another. The last Saltai deck we played against was Storm. We have a Saltai Scam deck. Uh, they, they can have this. I have Bayou for that if I even care at all. In step, fetch. I'm getting the Rock Run Triome. Or I'm not. <laughs> or I'm losing. Also an option. Okay. Savannah. Pitch to Fairy to Solitude. Gotta undo some of this work here. And then I can suspend a can of Rhinos. I did it in this order, so Days can't do anything this turn. Rhino can suspended. I think we finally found a matchup where I bring in the inevitable betrayals. I do need a blue source to do the things in my hand. Fire still works right now. If they play something like Bowmaster or Dothy Voidwalker, I can take that out. Won't be icing anything in the near future. Cycle to Troll, got an Underground Sea. And Animate Dead, getting a 5 power creature into play. All right. The race is on. Rhinos in exile tick down. Those not currently on the menu. Burrow's really good if I can find that blue source. Who knew stifling the first fetch land of the game was powerful. There's that other C. They're in hardcast grief level at this point. I can pick it off in response to the trigger. Grief's not actually good against my hand. I'd still rather they didn't have it. All right, deck. Blue source, blue source, blue source. Just rip me a tundra. Let me skip the middle mana fetch. No, no stifle. <laughs> Always had it. All right, I'm going to send a can of rhinos because they can actually beat Troll of Kazadoom in combat. This is just naturally three blockers. Crashing footfalls. Rhinos are in. Cool. All right. Wasn't expecting that to all just work. Orcish Bowmaster. I don't care about that card. It would have punished Uro a little bit. Abrupt decay, I care a lot about that card. Oh no, oh no. All right, I'm going to need another can of rhinos pretty quick here. They are down to one card in hand, though. Plus what they just drew. I go to eight from this attack. Can't block even if I wanted to. Has super menace. Land number five could represent hard cast force. They wouldn't be fetching if it's grief, though. It's getting hedge maze in here. Playing around Tishana's Tidebinder. 
Oh, your own Uro. I'm so jealous. All right, their deck rules. A bug scam. I am starting to pull ahead, though. My creatures are almost better than theirs, and I do have my own Uro in the mix. Stifle does stop cascading, so Stifle's always good. I think I want a Shardless Agent, though. Just the extra 2-2 body and before they can untap into a Force of Will. Days will get me either way. I don't really need to surprise them here. Okay, another can of Rhinos. Please don't have drawn Days randomly off of Uro. We did it. And I think Shardless Agent gets to attack here. Just a cheeky two. Leave back most of them. Now even if they have a removal spell, I could still block Troll. And I have Surprise 4th can coming next turn. This can's ready in the upkeep. Surprise fourth can. That's all the rhinos I play. We will have to outmuscle an Uro. But I have a lot of power and toughness. This Uro can't really attack. They're actually going to need a juke, I think. Like, uh, if this is just fair bug scam and has Uros and abrupt decays instead of the Atraxa Archon stuff, I feel pretty good. If they do suddenly come up with an Atraxa, I'm in a lot of trouble. Reanimating my solitude. Where did that even come from? <laughs> I guess that's fair. Right, they take out a Rhino, I gain 4 life. They still don't have attacks this turn. Unless they want to just trade Troll for a Rhino. Which isn't a very good deal, but might be the deal that they have. Okay. Crashing Footfalls on the stack. Okay, draw for turn. Please don't be the last can of Rhinos. Okay, I don't care about Days anymore. That's good. I think I'm just going to send these Rhinos now. Surprise Rhinos versus... Hardcast Force of Will. This is it, though. All the Cascade spells after this are bad. There's my whole deck. Revealed. Take a peek. They did have Force Blue card, it seems. Okay. All right, that's fine. Unfortunately, the plus one on Violent Outburst still doesn't get me through Uro. And I'm glad I got... What did they pitch? Oh, they pitched a Brazen Borrower. That was huge. Yeah, doing this on my turn versus letting them hardcast it... They had to pitch an answer to a Rhino. That's also a threat I can't block. And now we're just playing limited. Creatures of various sizes figuring out who has good attacks and who doesn't. We got some lifelink over here. We got some evasion here. Got some card draw here. They put a wasteland in. I'm going to block Uro with all of the Rhinos. I'm not giving them a free eat on Shardless Agent. But I want to make sure Uro dies even if they have a removal spell. Four cards in the graveyard. If they wasteland me, it's five. Okay, took me off blue. That's really powerful. And Uro's back. Blue mana would be very good for me. This Uro's a long way from going again. They can trade off with another Rhino, draw two cards on the way through. Still a good exchange. They are ahead here. All right, please don't have Stifle. I'd like to get my Uro into the game. I know this trigger is Bowmaster. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Do I fetch basic? I think so. I, I don't want to make Wasteland a good draw when it doesn't have to be a good draw. Green, blue, colorless. Getting this in now before they have mana up to cast a second Bowmaster, which would clear Shardless Agent immediately. If I draw any cards, Fire Ice. I can fire and ice with the mana that I have. Okay, here we go. Brainstorm. Unfair. Unfair advantage. And a fetch land to clear the Brainstorm. They are making attacks. Yeah, this is a good attack. This means that either Uro or Troll will make it through. I'm more worried about Uro. I'm going to triple block this and take the five. I could double block and triple block, but that leaves a blowout somewhere in this combat if they have a single removal spell, and I'd rather just take five. Uro's dead. I'm at eight. Fetch, fetch puts three other cards in the graveyard here. Reef is a really good exchange. They could cast Troll at this point. Oh, Harvester of Misery. Get wrecked me. Yeah, this is actually going to wrath me. I'm not convinced this card is good, but we did just see the basically the ceiling of how good this thing could be. This was got a little bit of buzz out of big score spoilers. Did kill your own Orcish Bowmaster, though. But killed basically my whole board. Okay. Um, I think I just attack here. I can't block any other creatures. If I can trade with this Menace thing, that's great. And my plan is to ice the troll. The Shardless Agent doesn't do anything anymore. Super sweet match, though. Fetching in the end step. If they have another Surveil land, they can guarantee Uro. If they just put whatever this is in the graveyard. They kept the card. Okay, have to ice now before they draw. 
well, land, not the most helpful. Wasteland, chill. Yeah, this takes me off. All right, we're good. I don't have to keep playing this game. That Harvester of Misery was really good. Okay, Bug Scam. Endurance, Brazen Borrower, Teferi. I like all of these. Force of Negation is bad. Do I want to inevitably betray this opponent? I don't think I want to cut Flush Footfalls, which means that my Cascades will be random. But I think that's worth it. I think Force of Will is bad. I think I should just play to the board here. Do I have more things to bring in? Brotherhood's End can mop up like Voidwalkers and Briefs and Bowmasters. All right. I think I'm going Forceless and playing to the board here. I can't keep a one lander. Got a mulligan. Come on, Dak. Guess we're just mulling to five versus scam. Get wrecked. All right. I actually prefer a four lander to a one lander. And I'm keeping a row because if they try to discard me, that's fine. And I'm going to fetch. I mean, they, they showed me stifle and wasteland. So I guess I'm just going to get rocker and triumph so I don't get stifled. And. The wasteland's gonna come if it comes. Not a wasteland. Grief, you spent two cards to put Uro in my graveyard for me. It's like you mulliganed. Got him. Played you like a drum. You wanna reanimate it now? Of course not. Okay. Windswept Teeth and pass. If I had access to Basic Island, I might have let on that, but I just don't. So I'm gonna try to overwhelm the Wastelands just by having a ton of non-basics around. This deck definitely needs like two or three surveillance in it though. And passing the turn with no action. I can just set to Fairy on the stack. That's what I'm going to do. I know they're a Daze deck, I know they're a Bowmaster deck, but they're also a discard deck. And if I don't play this thing, cool, I got two cards out of it. Deal. And we're just moving closer to Uro. I guess if I had fetched that turn, I could have Uroed next turn. Maybe that was an oversight. I just got excited I could play around Stifle. Oh, Master, you got it. In for two. Pernicious Deed, okay. Interesting. That's really good against Rhinos. Not great against the Fairy Time Raveler. I'm not going to get Yori on here. I'm going to save that until I have eight mana to get and deploy it all at once. I'm not going to hang it out there where a reanimate on Grief just clears it. I want to make as many cards in their deck as I can bad. Attack me for two, I'm at 13. Cycling a troll is your last card to reanimate. Doesn't seem like it. All right. I'm going to fetch in my upkeep. Because if they have stifle, I want to make it hurt on my turn. This Wood of Foothills was the last card they knew in my hand. Fetch turns on Uro. I have two greens, three blues. I would like a, re a backup green here. Only have one red. Red and green, Taiga. All right. Green, green, blue, blue. Okay, here comes Uro. If they're going to deed this, it's going to cost them their Bowmaster. I take one, but I get a land and a card. I could set up a line next turn where I brazen borrow to bounce their deed in the end step. And then I violent outburst, make rhinos, and I get at least one attack in. And then they have to spend three mana to stabilize on the following turn. Or they can just yeet it. Put that Euro, Euro in the graveyard. Sure. Done. Sold. They're passing with no plays. I'll get the Savannah. Jam out this basic island. I can dump my whole hand in response to a discard spell. I'm going to let them draw here. If they play land number five, I might regret it. But if they just cast Grief here, I'm going to pull their face in. Sick. All right, Outburst. Red, green, colorless. Inevitable Betrayal. I forgot. Oh yeah, I'll have one of your creatures now. How about that? I can grief you. Alright, they don't seem to play in Atraxa. Harvester of Misery. Disappointing. If I had sequenced this differently. I guess letting grief resolve. If I remembered the betrayal, I should have let grief resolve. Alright, bad. I'll take a troll though. Don't really care what's in their hand, I just want them dead. And cast Brazen Borrower as a creature. And then you can grief me. And then take nine. One, two, three, four. Can't quite get Uro yet. But we are at the spot I described where I have eight mana to get and deploy Yorion all at once. 
There's no location for a discard spell here. Yorion. Yorion. Sure, I'll flicker Brazen Borrower. Might as well untap it. It's free to do. Okay, here we go. If they bounce Troll, then they'll have a extra resource, but I have a bunch of flying available now. Borrower does die to Bowmaster, squeaky clean, which also means that any reanimate they draw now does take pressure off, but Yorian plus Troll is lethal. They can't block Yorian. They have to put their whole squad in front of Troll. And if they kill Borrower, that unlocks Uro. I got a lot going on right now. They might as well attack here because they can't block any of my creatures and I can't block theirs. Okay, they must have found a Bowmaster. This Bowmaster does answer Brazen Borrower and Troll in combat. Fire Ice was an insane rip for me. It's on them to do something here. I just have a straight up lethal attack with three unblockable creatures. Here they come. What did you find? It was Bowmaster. To the surprise of nobody. I'm going to let this trigger resolve. Then I'm going to fire the Bowmaster and the Orc army. I could also ice grief. I could ice any of them. Fire or ice, I could fire the grief. Every permutation of this results in the same 10 damage. Cool. Nice. All right, now we got to do that on the draw. The Inevitable Betrayal wasn't good, and we saw their deck doesn't have a re big reanimation juke. But I still think, after the grindiness of game one, it just feels like I probably still want a fifth thing. And if I could take their Harvester of Misery, that actually stabilizes pretty well. And having your troll stolen in this scam mirror is just one of the ways it can go wrong. All right, yeah. Fine, I'm just going in. Stay heavy on the Cascade spells. Oh no, too heavy on Cascade spells. I will be mulling this hand. It is not even remotely defensible or good. Love this. All basics, let's party. I can actually play Agent and Plea on basics. Violent Outburst requires a third color, even though it is more powerful. I am just going to play on my basics. Let's cut that concern out of the game. Drew another plea. If they fetch a Surveil Land or cast some spell in the end step here, I will fetch in response to at least get around Stifle. Basic Island. Basic Trains rolling. Edge Maze unlocked. And they kept their card. Okay, this Grief's a lot better than the last one. Grief Pitching Troll. They see my hand has four powerful three drops in it. I hope their hand has three Wastelands right now. That's what I need. They did not fetch a Black Source, which means they already have one or they have no plans of reanimating this. More likely they already have one. Took the Teferi. And reanimate. Probably take Shardless Agent. Yep. Opponents also got into six minutes on their clock to my 15 and a half. Six minutes is plenty of time to play a game of Magic, but if they stay on the pace of the last two games, they're going to be in trouble. Replaced my Shardless Agent right away. Love that. I also love the F6 value I can get. No bluffs here. I'm not countering shit. Go ahead. Cast your spells. Did not shuffle their ponder. They cycled a troll for sewers and then played sewers all in the main phase. Just looking for something to do here. They've been to second troll off the sewers. Their next reanimate is going to be really powerful. Brazen Borrow makes it worse. Shardless Agent. I don't care about the lost information. I'm just going to cast the better spell. I would like to at least have a 2-2 two -two still around if they counter the footfalls, which they did not do. They could have Deed in their hand. That works. Brainstorm. Okay. And they tap their green to do it. If they were digging for Deed, that tells me they already have a green source or they just forgot that Deed's in out in their deck. Green source confirmed. Uro. All right. Yep. They don't mind Uro. They can't attack here. Betrayal. What a terrible card. Uh, but here we go. Attack for 10. I am not going to put another can of rhinos out into the known pernicious deed in their deck. I already have lethal here. They can escape Uro, but I could bounce it. And then I could attack them to one. No need to overcommit and just get completely ranched here. Here's Uro. I'm going to bounce it in response to its trigger. Just give them the least opportunities to have force. It's back in their hand. They go to 11. They get a land. Solitude pitches are off ardently. I like that. Okay, put you to one. Still not going to make Pernicious Deed good. I refuse to do it. I will put Yorian in my hand, though. 
just not doing anything else with this mana. Because I played on basics, I can't cast Brazen Borrower, which is actually a huge spew here. But I don't know how many Wastelands are in their hand right now. Ooh, the Filigree Silex. Sweet. Yeah, that's another Pernicious Deed variant. Yeah, they could kill my Rhinos right now. Attacking with Grief is bold. They must have Bowmaster. Because they are just dead to this. Uh, they could Uro and go to four. That might make some sense. Yep, there's Uro. Going to four. Uro's gone. Fetch down to three. Uh-oh. Thought sees me in pass. Thought sees me in pass. Just getting a ponder through here. Uh, I think that fetch land gives me the opportunity to just win here. If I play Ardent play first and then only attack with Shardless Agent. Oh, sick. Now I just play it anyway. Is this only as a sorcery? No, I think they're playing around Tidebinder. Okay, if this Ardent play resolves, I win. Day's no longer an issue. Okay, moment of truth. And if they force, I also win. And they need force of negation here. Okay, sick. The exalted off Ardent play is the win con. <laughs> so messed up. But we'll take it. On to the final round. The NYSE Open is a prestigious, long-running vintage tournament based out of New York City. It's returning again this summer, June 22, 2024, in Plainview, New York. This 15 proxy event has a $500 entry. That's a lot of money, but what are we playing for? First place gets a Black Lotus. Second through eighth place get Time Twister, Time Walk, and all five Moxen. At 115 players, a playset of Bizarre Baghdad is added to the prize pool. At 135, four Mistress Workshops. At 155, four Foil Gaia's Cradle. This prize pool is better than Eternal Weekend. If you think it's worth playing for, sign up for the event on Melee.gg or use the link in the video description, and I will definitely see you there. I'm on the draw in the final round. Five draws. Count it. Put that in my complaint bank for the rest of my life. I will keep this hand. 3-1, positive records locked, playing for the bread and butter. 4-1. and one. Keep this account flush with trophy chests. Opponent mold to 6 and has a Mishra's Bauble. Looking at their own hand. Okay, this looks like some kind of Delver. I do need land number 3 to play. But I'm doing stuff. Force Negation, way less exciting now that I suspect they're Delver. Solitude's still really good though. Hate playing into Wasteland here, but I think I have to. If I get in Dotha Triome, Tundra, Cass, Leyline Binding, Dotha, jeez, deck, come on, need these lands. It's required to play the game. I'm just going to bind this thing now before it gets any surveils. I've got a bunch of answers to other stuff in my hand. Brazen Bar is really good against Murktide. Solitude's really good against everything, but it costs two cards. There's a Daze. Into Questing Druid. All right, this is fine. I'm not going to force a negation at days. I really need to fade Wasteland and draw land. These are the things I want in life. They're brainstorming off of the floating mana still in their upkeep, which means they still have a fetch available. They've seen so many cards. I'm so scared of Wasteland right now. Ouch! Yeah, never not. I would have to pitch Arden Plea to take this damage off, but I think I have to take this damage off. God, it would suck to get dazed here. I probably should have taken three then untapped. All right, we got away with it. Okay. Not under any pressure. Yet. And a Delver follow-up. All right, Deck, if you can keep the lands coming, I can keep playing this game. No chance. Delver trigger. Did not flip. In for one. Under. Tropical Island. We're safe. Come on, Lance. No! Yeah, this is just going to be one of those games. If I knew the matchup, maybe I mulligan differently. But my hand was fine. Had two lands. Murktide Rage. I'm going to force that pitching force of negation. I'd rather answer with Brazen Borrower, but I don't know that that's going to work. If I don't draw the land. My goodness. All right, glad I forced that. Still bad, though. Now a fetch land kills Delver. Doesn't just bounce it. That's big. Ponder. Do not shuffle the Ponder. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Ooh. You're saying there's a chance. Fetch for Taiga. I'm going to fire Delver. I think actually killing one of these things is better than bouncing and hoping to tread water. Obviously, they're a deck with days in it. All right, force some negation. 
probably bad. So if they attack me to four here, if I draw a green source, I don't have to fetch four. Endurance can stabilize. And they have nothing. No lightning bolt, no merc died, no cards. <laughs> Sick. We're so dead. All right. Uh, well, I guess I'm literally not dead. Ardent plea, exile merc tide, pitch it to solitude, and then I can brazen borrow the delver and I go to three, dead to any lightning bolt in their deck. Starting to make a fight out of it. I would actually prefer to just lose here because I hate when you stabilize at three and then you start doing stuff and your delver opponent who's at 27 is just like, yeah, I played lightning bolt, remember? And it happens like nine turns later. I hate the illusion of hope. They've used one bolt already. Delver's back. Oh my god. Okay, passing the turn. Delver trigger. Oh, fetching in response to Delver trigger. Delver trigger. Days. Well, better bounce the Delver while I can. And now that I know Days is in their hand, this game is unwinnable. Hell yeah. All right. You got me. All right. Now we know they're Delver. Brotherhood's End, Endurance. Brazen Borrower come in. Teferi's and maybe. Force of Negation and Will both coming out. We're just slamming to the board here. Yeah, I think Teferi, just all this stuff makes sense over all this stuff. And that's a pretty clean pit. Let's go. And granted with a no lander to kick off game two. Mulligan this. Oh, why is this my cursed lot in life? I'm going to five. I'm not keeping a two lander. Jesus Christ. All right. I guess I'm keeping a two lander. I tried to resist, but deck refuses to give me more than that. Great spot where Surveil Land would help me find it. Uh, there are only a two Lorien Reveals in this deck. Maybe there should be four. I'm not going to fetch here. Trying to maximize for relevant draws. We did it. Okay, so I've, if I play Indotha Triumph here, I don't get to Leyline Bind, but this sets up a turn three play, possibly. Delver flipped, revealing Ponder. Getting in there. There's the Ponder. Digging for that Wasteland. It's so juicy right now. Out of Wasteland. Dragon's Rage Channeler. Okay, I'm just going to go to my turn. I'm not going to fetch Rocker and Triumph here. I don't need to do that. I can fetch a Red Land here. And I have Domain. I think I'd rather have Taiga. I could just send the Rhino Can into Days. I don't really like that, but I don't like not doing that either. All right, let's go. Because Leyline Binding, I could spend one third of my mana to fight over half of their threats and pass with this wildly inefficient setup. Or I could try to get on board here. It did cost them two cards. That's fine with me. And I do still have two white removal spells in my hand that Days can't hit anymore. So they are going to bash me to 10 here. Big beats. Endurance is a great draw. Usually is versus Delver. They just pitched a Merc Tide. I wonder if that means they have another one. If they only had one creature in play, I think I would have Leyline Binded last turn. But them having two is just so inefficient, ineffective, irrelevant. Tropical Island. Okay, I'm going to play Trop and cast Leyline Binding. Binding right meow. Spent a Force of Will on that, pitching Daze. Glad that Daze wasn't in their hand last turn. And now I can get Yorion that can pitch to Solitude. Or I could try to actually play out a game where I Solitude, Flicker, Solitude. I don't think I have time for that, though. I go to four, Solitude. I'd have to fetch to play the Solitude. Yep, eat shit me. Solitude, the Dragon's Rage Channeler. Just a little late on that one. Go to seven, though. Pretty robust life total, all things considered. If I can draw a good card, we could be back in this. Endurance does it. One in my Cascaders is fine, I guess. Brazen Borrower is good. Wasteland's really bad for me. They could take me off red completely. I went after Indotha Dryum and said, hey, that was wrong. Lord and Revealed, great. Okay, they got two cards in hand. The next attack puts me to four. Fetch puts me in bolt range. This was the turn I needed a, a big hit. And I'm going to cycle this Lorian revealed because casting that card is not going to win me the game. Cool. Old Merktide Regent. 
what do I need to do here? Uh, Brazen Borrower can bounce Murktide Block Delver, assuming they have no cards that are useful in their hand. Uh, I could Uro into Brazen Borrower or Leyline Binding. Yeah, Uro into one or two mana removal. Or just draw land. All right, yeah. Smushed by Delver. Okay, positive record. I like it. I think the mana needs help here. I basically spent every single game either mulling one and two landers or hoping my opponent didn't have Wasteland because I could never beat it. I think just adding two more Lorien Revealed helps a lot without diluting your blue count, spell count. It's kind of like upping your land count at a very low cost. I do think Teferi Time Raveler is kind of washed in Legacy right now, just past his prime. There's matchups where he's good, there's spots where he's good, but I think you could actually just cut every Teferi from this deck and play two more Lorien Revealed and maybe main deck another Endurance. And I don't think you'd miss Teferi very much. That also moves an Endurance over from the sideboard, frees up a sideboard slot there. I also think four Force of Vigor, four Brotherhood's End is wildly overcompensating for artifacts. I understand the Chalice of the Void shuts down this deck's core engine, but we have Ottawara, Besaju, Brazen Borrower, Leyline Binding, all in the main. You don't need that much for this. And the current build has to vary and would continue to have it if you don't cut it. I want at least two Surveil Lands in here, maybe three. I get that lands coming in untapped in your three drop theme deck is pretty important, but you're going to spend the first two turns of every game just fetching. And you get that smooth out at very low cost compared to other decks. Yeah, that's where I'd go with here. Four Lauren Revealed, no Teferis, three Endurance, at least two Surveil Lands. Sideboard Teferi and Sideboard Endurance can become just two more cards that are useful. And among these eight Artifact Hate cards, you could probably cut two of them and never miss them. And help shore up other matchups. Combo seems tough. And the cool thing with these sort of decks versus combo is if you play something like Damping Sphere or Lavinia or Collector Oof, you just cascade into it. It doesn't dilute your cascades. It's a juke. You take the Crashing Footfalls out and then you just bring in like three or four Hate Bears and you have all these direct routes to them. That's something that could be explored here. That's where I'm going to leave this one. Vlandrick, thank you for sharing it with us. Congrats on re entering the paper legacy world with a performance. Everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out the Patreon, and I'll see you next time.